it's Josh again from Adventure Hideaway Guided Trail Tours. It's time for part two of the ultimate dirt bike trailer. Today we're going to finish the wheel chocks to keep the bikes in place when we're traveling. We're also going to build some hangers. We're going to put our decals on. We're going to make a dedicated spot for a shovel and a broom. First up today are going to be the wheel chocks. Now we've already used this trailer a lot and you can get by without wheel chocks, but it really is better if you have them. We've just been running our tire up against one of these ringed E-Track connectors, and it works okay. They do bounce around a little bit sometimes, so we want a dedicated slot that's going to clip in, and it will capture our tire as we drive up. And then the nice thing about E-Track is you can move them back and forth, move them wherever you want. We're also going to make some hooks We'll take a blank E-Track connector and then we'll attach a hook to it. So we'll just weld a round piece of steel on there. Those hooks are really good for hanging backpacks, uh, clothes. If you want to bring a lawn chair, they're really handy. So we'll make half a dozen of those and keep them in, in the trailer. I have everything I'm going to need right here to build my wheel chocks. I've laid it all out so you guys can see what I'm using. I brought in some E-Track. We're going to need to use that as a guide when we build the chocks. One thing about E-Track that you need to know is it's sort of directional. So one side of this clip has a lever that moves and you pull that lever back to slide it into the E-Track and then it kind of snaps in place. And as long as you're pulling from this one side or the other you don't have any problems but when you pull forward and backwards or up and down depending on where you install this you have to make sure that you don't pull in the direction of the lever. As long as you're pulling this way, the E-Track is going to stay in place. And again, side to side, it'll stay in place just fine. But if you start pulling in this direction, there is a chance that it will wiggle and it'll flip that lever up and then it'll pop out. I also have some half inch round steel and some two inch by eighth inch steel that we'll use to build the chocks. The half inch will be used to build the hangers. I have 12 E-Track connectors. These are blank connectors. You can put a strap through this hole here, but we just use them um, as a blank connector and then we'll just weld, weld everything right to that. So let's get started. We're going to build six wheel chocks. I've made a mock-up of a wheel chalk out of a piece of aluminum I just had lying around. And you can see that the wheel chalk is not symmetric. The reason being, when we install it on the wall of the trailer, we're going to drive our bikes in at an angle, so the right side needs to be bigger than the left side, and you can't do right angles, otherwise you're not going to fit the tire in. So what we have found is, you want to offset this about 50 degrees. So overall, this is going to be 9 inches. So I have my flat steel, an 8 inch thick. I'm going to just measure out 9 inches and then cut out enough to finish all six wheel chocks. I have the steel cut out. I have two inch steel and I really want a wheel chalk that is wider than two inches. I didn't have anything lying around that was three or four inches so I'm just going to double these up so that each wheel chalk will be four inches tall. So I need to put a two inch mark on each of these and a three inch mark on each of them. And then you need to use a square to draw the line. What I have here is a heavy duty eight inch vise with a five inch brake. They do sell eight inch brakes, but if you're gonna use a vise brake, uh, I, I wouldn't bend anything 8 inches. I would use a different type of brake. So you set this in and line up the sharp side with that line that we just drew. Now this vise is heavy enough that I can bend 8 inch steel that is 2 inches thick. It's going to be a lot of work. I'm going to do one set and then I'm going to take the rest of the steel down to our other shop and use the press brake and it makes short work of it. So as you get close to the desired angle, pull out your gauge 
And just a little bit more. That looks perfect. Okay, turn it around. So right there, bend away. Okay, I'm going to show you the difference between a vice brake and a press brake. The press brake has a 20 ton bottle jack on it. I now have all the wheel chocks welded together. Here's one. We now need to connect it to our E-Track connector. And I'm going to do this upside down. So the wheel chock will sit this way. Here's the long side, here's the short side. Our bike is going to come in right here and rest in this crease. So I need to put an E-Track connector here. And then I'll weld a piece of steel to the back of this to fit in that groove so that we actually have two uh, positive stops in this direction. Okay, I've turned the E-Track upside down. Now I'm going to slide all the way to the left here so that this is touching the E-Track and then I just cut a little half inch piece of steel and I'll stick it right up against the E-Track there. A couple quick tacks and then I'll take it off and weld it all together. Now we need to work on the hangers. That's some half inch round steel. We're going to use a torch to heat it up and bend it. First one done, rinse, lather, and repeat. I have all the hooks cut out. Time to weld them onto the E-Track connectors. Here is one of our vinyl strips. Um, we have our logo and, and Adventure Hideaway. You need vinyl on your trailer, it just looks good. And I want to tell you a little bit about our logo. Um, I have a friend in town who actually does graphic design and he designed our logo for us. He's really good at what he does. He illustrates books, he makes logos, and he's very reasonably priced. So we had a conversation about what I wanted. He gave me a price range. After a little bit, he sent me about 20 hand-drawn quick ideas, and I picked three of those ideas, and then he drilled down a little further, and then we picked one idea, and we went a little further on that until we got the logo exactly like we wanted and then he sent me all the files and and we put it on all of our stuff so I'm gonna leave his email address in the comment in the description and if you need a logo he's a great guy to go to something similar with the broom on the other side towards the front.
This is a little bit of an overkill, but hey, we have a mill. Why not use it? Uh, we face this side so it'll sit flat against the wall of the trailer. And we, so you notice that one side is bigger. That's big enough we can get um, our fasteners through there. And the other side is small. So we'll just get the screws through there and then the heads will grab. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, the inside is finished for part two. Let's step inside here and take a look. Broom holder works great, shovel holder works great. We have two different sets of coat racks for airing out your gear when they're nice and sweaty on a hot day. Plenty of room in the front for gear. You could even put another bike up there if it's a smaller bike. Show you the wheel chocks. So they have a connector on one side and then they have a stay on the other. So you put them anywhere in here you'd like. So here we have our bike connected. Wheel in the chalk. And we have this connected to the ring connector. Same on that side. This is a 6x12 trailer. And with the 6 foot trailer, you can move the back wheel that far, which we recommend putting it against the wall. And then we really recommend putting the kickstand down. That gives another um, securing point. Uh, we have hit some pretty big bumps on accident and had bikes fall over. So make sure that kickstand is down. And then you just line up all the bikes across this uh, side of the wall. If you have a seven foot trailer, then like our other one, then this wheel will slide out a little bit more. And if you had an eight, you might be able to put it in perpendicular. Um, I wanna show you, we do have this spring saver. So when you tighten these down, you're putting pressure on the tire and then on the triple clamp up inside here and those aren't very much you can get them for I don't know 12 or 15 bucks or if you build a fence you can just make one out of a 4x4 and they work equally well all right we just stuck the second bike in uh, we recommend alternating big bike little bike big bike little bike if you have it you can connect to that ring right there and then set a new ring and again We've got our 4x4 in there protecting these front shocks. And then we'll bring a big bike in and another little bike. Four bikes. Four bikes in there. Piece of cake. You could fit more if you need to. And of course our hooks. We really love those hooks. They come in handy. But obviously this place is way too dark. So that's one of the things we're going to do in the next video. Putting in some light. Alright, so another thing we did this trailer really quickly was put on some bearing buddies. So we just took a big pair of pliers and pulled off the cap, the greasable cap on this bearing. And we installed a bearing buddy, which is another cap, but it's a little bit longer and it's spring loaded. So as you use your trailer and it heats up on the inside, everything expands. A little bit of grease might poke out when it cools down then it contracts and it will suck in a little bit of dirt or um, moisture and that can wreck your bearing over time. So bearing buddies are really good for marine trailers that you end up putting into water. But you fill this cap up with grease and it's spring loaded and this part of the cap is sucked in so there's always positive pressure on the grease inside the bearing. So even when it heats up, there's enough pressure that when it cools down, it won't have, it won't shrink enough so that it can suck in more moisture. And then they come with these nifty little caps. And then you can always look and see, oh, do I need more grease? How far is this cap from the bottom? If it starts to suck in, then you've leaked out some grease, just fill it all back up. And then your bearings should last forever. And one more thing that we like to do on our trailers to keep our electronics free of dirt. This plug here hangs most of the time when the truck's not connected to the trailer. It rests in the dirt, the wind blows on it, gets rained on, and the pins inside there get full of dirt and then your lights don't work. So what we like to do is install a socket. And this socket isn't wired to anything. This one happened to go in the hole where the jack could be mounted, but this is a side mounted jack, so I just screwed it in right here. And when the trailer's not hooked up, I'll just leave that right there. It will sit here, not get dirty. You do need to drill a hole in the bottom so any rain will just leak through the bottom and not it won't sit there in water. And when you're ready, 
your plug is always clean and ready to just stick in the truck. Okay, that is part two of the Ultimate Dirt Bike Trailer. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for the next video, please leave them in the comments. What you see here are parts that we're going to stick in the trailer for part three. My wife calls this the Amazon store. Whenever anything shows up that says Adventure Hideaway, this is where it goes. So we have a, an exhaust fan, we have a fuel tank, we have a solar panel and a lot of other little things that we're gonna put in the trailer. Lights for sure, that's the first thing I'm going to do. And hopefully you noticed my awesome I do my own dirt bike stunts, I do my own stunts shirt. We have designed an entire line of dirt bike t-shirts. They're funny, they're quirky, they're a little bit inspirational and those will also be coming and they will be for sale on our website.